Today in SPG1 Tactical, we take a look at the Icarus Precision Ace 365 Evo. For some backstory, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've done some reviews on Icarus products in the past. This has developed a relationship over the past year that eventually led me to competing for Icarus Precision at the SIG P365 EDC Championships at the SIG facility in New Hampshire. I also took that opportunity to become a certified armorer in the 320 and 365 platforms. I'm now extremely pleased to state that I am a brand ambassador and competitive shooter for Icarus Precision. Not only do they have fantastic grip modules and slides, but they're amazing people as well. But one of the perks of developing this relationship and shooting for them is that I was able to receive the Icarus Precision Evo PMM several months before its release on August 3rd. This gave me an opportunity to practice with it before the competition and really put some time and rounds through the setup so that I could bring you a solid and verifiable review. Now, obviously, as I have a relationship with Icarus, this is not an unbiased review. However, I strive to make sure that my videos are backed by facts, testing, and not just opinion. I'm gonna break this video into three main parts. First, we'll be discussing the Evo and what sets it apart from stock grips and other Icarus offerings, such as the Hybrid Elite Pro I've done a video on before. Second, will be the full build list setup I used for the SIG P365 Championships that brought me in at sixth overall out of 196 competitors. And finally, will be my personal opinions and experiences. So without further ado, let's roll that hype video and then get into the review. Evolution, baby. The Icarus Precision Evo is a huge step up in capabilities and features from what has been available in the past. Starting by taking a polymer pistol and strengthening it by making it a full metal gun with the grip modules made out of aluminum. The Evo is available in two options. One is the XL length, which sits flush with a standard XL slide. The other is the XL PMM, which sits flush with a PMM single port JTTC compensator installed in addition to the XL slide. This increases the overall length about 5 8 inches and brings it to the length of approximately a Glock 19, only arguably in a thinner and more ergonomic profile with compensation. So this brings the Evo PMM to an overall length of seven and three eighths inches and the XL Evo to approximately six and three quarter inches with both being three and five eighths inch tall from the top of that grip module to the bottom of the magwell. Here is a comparison in size of the PMM Evo to the stock grip. As a quick side note, PMM does make a barrel and single port compensator for the standard P365 that brings the total length to that of an XL. So you could run that on the XL Evo and still be compensating in a shorter package. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. 
Now there are some differences aside from just length between these two modules. So let's talk about what both include and then the additional features of the PMM Evo. Starting from the front, you'll notice the addition of 1913 Picatinny slots. Icarus was one of the first manufacturers to bring this functionality to the SIG P365 platform in their hybrid series, and is how I originally came to even know about Icarus. Only with the recent addition of the Macro has SIG even offered a Picatinny option. The Evo PMM has five Picatinny slots, and the Evo XL has three. This allows you to attach standard mounting pistol lights to a small frame pistol without needing to use proprietary products. I've personally found good fitment out of the Streamlight TLR7A, but you could mount others such as some of the Surefires, Enforces, or Olights. On the PMM Evo, I've even been able to attach a Surefire X300. It's definitely a bit obnoxious and disproportionate, but you can do it. One of the other reasons that I like grip modules that extend flush with this slide is that it helps to protect accidentally pushing the gun out of battery in a close encounter. In the unfortunate and hopefully unlikely event that you wind up with an attacker in extreme proximity or on top of you, you may wind up with the barrel of your gun against your attacker. If you press against the front of the slide, this can actually push the gun out of battery, making it unable to fire. Using flush fit grip modules and weapon mounted lights can help to mitigate this possibility, making the extended rail a multi-use feature. As we move back on the module, you'll notice that there are integrated thumb rests built into the grip module itself. Both Evo modules come exclusively with ambidextrous thumb rests. These thumb rests feature a diamond pattern texture and provide an indexing position for your support hand thumb in either left or right handed shooting. This helps to both position your hand into a correct grip, but also provides a solution for helping to control the recoil on a smaller pistol. So it's really more like a gas pedal than just a thumb rest. The additional benefit of the weak hand thumb rest is also providing a tactile touch point for indexing your trigger finger straight and off the trigger. In my dry fire, training, and competing, I've had no issues or decrease in ability to get my trigger figure onto the trigger quickly. Moving down the grip, you'll see one of my favorite features, the double trigger guard undercuts. I also showed this off on the Hybrid Pro Elite video I did. Aside from being aesthetically pleasing, it provides for both a high undercut location for your firing hand and a touch point for your support hand. Usually trigger guards are just a smooth and curved protection feature to stop exterior inputs from being able to depress the trigger. The support hand undercut actually provides an extra locking point for your support hand that helps to maintain a master firing grip. The textured grooves on the bottom aren't aggressive, but do provide channels that sweat can drain through, increasing the secureness of your offhand grip as well. It's really one of those things that you need to feel to understand that it actually makes a difference. Plus it looks really cool. And both of these undercuts allow you to get your grip really high up on the back strap and the front portion of the grip, putting you into a more ergonomic position and closer to that bore line. This helps to place more of that momentum from the reciprocating slide directly into your grip and arms, as opposed to trying to rotate over your wrists. Further back on the module is the grip itself, starting with what Icarus calls their Elite Grip Texture. This is the same diamond knurled texture as on the thumb rest and is a slightly more aggressive texture than their previous iterations. I've carried the same version of this texture on my Pro Elite for almost a year now with no issues of chafing or discomfort and wore it in training as well as a full day of competing at the SIG Championships with no problems. I've also even done testing using baby oil to show that even under the most slippery conditions, the grip is still functional. The bottom of the grip module is the oversized and extended magwell. This does a couple of things. It fills up the base of your grip a bit more, reduces the chance for pinching, and provides a significantly larger magwell opening and contour for reloading. The Hybrid Pro and Elite Pro were already larger openings than the stock grip, but the Evo takes it even further, giving you plenty of space to insert a mag quickly and efficiently. 
On the back strap of the grip is the new addition of the back strap swell or memory bump. It actually makes a micro compact grip feel much larger in your hand without egregiously increasing the size or form factor. What it does is fill up the space in your palm, giving it a larger feel and providing more real estate for your support hand to make contact with the offhand side of the gun. It's just another ergonomic feature that makes this grip super comfortable. Finally, on the rearmost portion of the grip module is the contoured beaver tail. This is an obvious extension over the stock grip or even the Pro Elite module, but the curve serves a rather cool and significant function. It reduces the chance that when you're going for your draw stroke, you do what is called webbing your hand. This is when the back of your gun gets caught on that web of skin between your thumb and index fingers. This slight curve helps to guide your hand along that beaver tail right up into the high back strap grip, getting you into the correct positioning that much easier. And it also helps to prevent any possibility of slide bite, which is when your same skin webbing gets pinched between the slide and grip during the cycling of the gun. So that's the overall rundown of the features of what makes the Evo so amazingly awesome. But there are a few features of the PMM Evo that warrant some discussion. First, even though they look similar, they are made of different types of aluminum. The Evo XL is made from 7075 aluminum, whereas the Evo PMM is made from 6061T6 and includes a stainless steel recoil lug. I had an opportunity to speak with the CEO of Icarus and discuss what these differences mean. From a reliability and functionality perspective, there's no real difference. But the 6061T6 has properties that are supposedly better at recoil or vibration absorption. This makes the PMM Evo feel, per se, softer in the hand as far as recoil. And with the addition of the PMM compensator makes it a very smooth shooting pistol in such a compact form. The 7075 Aluminum XL Evo is just a rock solid hunk of strong and durable aluminum with no real additional frills. The PMM Evo also comes with tungsten carbide weights in the back strap, adding some additional mass to the system. This brings the PMM Evo up to 5.475 ounces compared to the XL Evo's 4.77 ounces. The stainless steel recoil lug is used as an added structural support for the softer 6061 and replicates the same steel lug that you'll find in stock grips. What? You didn't think that the grip module was fully polymer, did you? The recoil has to hit something besides plastic. But these differences are what set aside the PMM Evo as a more high-end module, along with a more high-end price. And as stated in the past pertaining to Icarus products, there are only two kind of negatives, if you can even really call them that, and those are the price and fitment of holsters. For a premium machine product that increases the performance of your firearm, you're looking at shelling out $379 for the XL Evo and $449 for the PMM Evo. Keeping in mind that while other compensators may work in the PMM module, it's really meant to be teamed up with a PMM single port compensator and barrel, which brings up the cost even more. But if you're looking for the best 365 that money can buy, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. And if you're seriously interested, make sure you grab one of these things when they're in stock because these things go fast. As far as holsters, Icarus has a list of manufacturers that make holsters that work for the Evo Grip, but also have teamed up with a couple of manufacturers that they carry on their website, a &R Designs being one of them, and as of this publishing, is still in stock on their website. For the SIG competition, I used a Mechanitech holster that required very slight modification to fit the Evo PMM, but that's a rundown of the specs of the Icarus Evo modules. But now let's jump into the build list that I used to complete the setup and for the competition, and then we'll get into my personal thoughts on how it performed. To complete this build setup, the fire control unit is obviously a SIG P365 FCU. And I did change the trigger to an M-Carbo flat trigger, which functioned fairly nicely. 
This FCU sits inside the Icarus Precision PMM EVO module that we've been discussing. I was very honored to be provided an early release of the Align Tactical Offset Extended Mag Release to help make my reloads that much smoother. And to complete the lower portion of the firearm, I attached a Streamlight TLR-7A weapon-mounted light to my Picatinny rail, which made the setup similar to my everyday carry gun and provided just a little more weight to the front of that gun. The slide is an XL length, machined and milled by Icarus Precision with extra serrations and lightning holes, and was made functional with a simple slide completion kit for the striker assembly and extractor. The barrel and compensator are both made by Parker Mountain Machine, often abbreviated as PMM. The PMM Evo was designed to sit flush with this combination. For recoil springs, I chose the DPM three-stage recoil springs and am using the smaller plunger and one of the heavier and longer springs. For an optic, I chose to go with the Holosun 507K X2 Red Dot, which fits the footprint of the SIG P365 XL slide cut. However, I have got my hands on some of the new Romeo Zero Elites, which seem to be a step up from the original Zero and will be doing some testing on those in the near future, so stay tuned. And even though I do have a red dot, I am a fan of redundancy, so backup iron sights are something I prefer. As such, I went with a Dawson Precision front sight. I haven't done any real testing with it yet. However, I did wind up in a situation during the competition where my red dot had a malfunction, and I was able to still finish the stage taking eighth overall by using my backup sights. For those curious, the size front sight I used is the 0 .190 inch tall and 0 .115 inch wide ramped serrated version. Again, I haven't done any real precision testing to see exactly where it's hitting, but it was good enough as a backup to hit steel poppers under timed stress. And of course, the gun was kept functioning smoothly using S2S 5-in-1 gun lube, which you can find on my website at spg1tactical.com. For supporting gear, I used 12 round magazines with the Icarus Precision B Ace pads, which provided a little more weight on the bottom of the magazine to aid in extraction during reloading. And of course, they look pretty darn cool as well. The holster that I used, as stated before, was the McKinetech Talon Appendix in the waistband holster. I did have to do just a little bit of modification for the longer PMM setup and the Align Tactical mag release but it performed quite well for the competition. And lastly, for my magazines, I used an STAC Kiwi double mag pouch with their belt clip adapters. It was this total setup that allowed me to just really just grip it and rip it throughout the SIG competition. But now, let's talk about how it performed. If you haven't gathered by now, this thing is amazing. That is both my subjective and objective opinion. I was obviously able to place extremely well in a very large shooting match, which certainly had some part to do with skill, but this grip module just made it so easy. The ergonomics and thumb rest just bring your hand into an outstanding and comfortable position that also allow you to get such a positive control over a small pistol. This in combination with the backstrap swell and compensator made me feel like I had the control of a much larger frame handgun. The recoil was extremely manageable, allowing me to make successive and rapid shots quite easily. Accuracy was unbelievable and on point, both at distance and overall. Here you can see me taking first place on a 75 yard stage, hitting a 10 by 12 piece of steel twice with only two shots. And per points, only one other person was overall more accurate than myself with points down throughout the entire match. The combination of the oversized magwell, the B ace pads, and the Align Tactical mag release just helped make my reloads super smooth, minimizing downtime and keeping my overall stages that much quicker. And now, I know that I've been approaching this from a competition standpoint, but the major differences between a competition and self-defense comes down to realistic tactics and scenarios and physiological stresses. The gun as a whole, and more specifically the module, 
is judged based upon its ability to perform in any scenario. So if you're looking at this module or setup for an everyday carry use, I think you'll find it to be more than adequate for your needs, whether you go with the PMM EVO or the XL EVO. Even with the flared magwell, the max width is just 1.37 inches wide, which is 0.2 inches larger than the stock magwell and only 0.04 inches larger than a Glock 19 stock magwell. So it's still a solid choice for concealability. The ergonomics, the features, the aesthetic, and the durability just make this grip module a force to be reckoned with. So if you have the money and the desire to take your 365 variant to an even higher level, you will not be disappointed with this purchase. But there you have it. The rundown and review of the Icarus Precision Evo. If you felt there was anything that I missed or have further questions, please feel free to hit up the comment section below. And speaking of viewer engagement, go ahead and take those trigger fingers to tap or click on those like and subscribe buttons. The channel's growing every day and allowing me to do bigger and better things, but each sub helps, so we appreciate your patronage. If you're looking for outstanding training, hit up Intuitive Self Protection at intuitivesp.com or the ISP Facebook page where you can find course schedules, videos, and testimonials. Make sure you also head over to spg1tactical.com, which is another growing endeavor, but there you can find a digital book club with books I recommend, endorsed gear, affiliates with discount codes, and a shop where you can find the S2S 5-in-1 gun lube, the book that I helped to co-author, The Six Bullets You Can't Leave Home Without, and very soon we'll have tactically themed shirts and hoodies for your wardrobe. But until next time, stay safe, stay smart, and stay tactical, my friends.